Hello again and welcome back to another episode of our Reichert Planetarium Virtual Outreach Program Series. My name is Dave Bush. I am the director of the Charles and Helen Reichert Planetarium at the Vanderbilt Museum located in Centerport, New York, Long Island. We have a team of astronomy educators and planetarium presenters that are excited to bring space and astronomy based themes to you. If you'd like to learn more about our facility, visit our website at vanderbiltmuseum.org and like us on Facebook and Instagram. If you like this program, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Today, I'm going to talk about the skies of spring. Springtime is a time of renewal and growth. After a long cold winter, we see the days getting longer, we feel the temperatures getting warmer, and finally we see the first signs that our beautiful trees, birds, and flowers are returning to the landscapes all around us. It reminds us that in due time, all things come back around with the cycles of nature. Without clocks and calendars to show us what time of year it is, we would still have these visual cues that would let us know that the seasons continue along in their steady march. Some of the Native American tribes referred to the moon of April as the pink moon. Not because the moon itself is pink. Here's a picture I took of the moon in April just holding my phone up to the eyepiece of a telescope. As you can see, the moon is not pink. The reason why it's called the pink moon is because in April many of the ground flowers tend to be pink in color, particularly a ground flower called phlox. This is why the moon of April is referred to as the pink moon. The changing of the seasons is an effect of the tilt of the Earth on its axis. During winter time, the North Pole is tilted away from the sun, and so the days are short and temperatures are cold. But now, the tilt of the North Pole of Earth is once again beginning to tilt toward the sun as our planet continues in its journey around it. Our ancient ancestors used the sky as a gigantic clock and calendar. If they saw a particular arrangement of stars in the sky shortly after sunset, then they knew exactly what time of year it was. And we can still do this today. Depending upon what year it is, we see different planets towards the south, along in an imaginary line called the ecliptic. Because the planets move and so does the moon, they are not in the same positions in the sky every spring. But the stars and constellations are the same in the sky every springtime. Today, I'm using a free program called Stellarium. It's like having your own planetarium on a desk or laptop. I've set the sky to just around sunset for mid-April. We are just about ready to say goodbye to the famous constellation of Orion the Hunter and say hello to the stars that now dominate the sky in the south now. Here's Orion. Orion is a wintertime constellation. If we find his belt stars, they point us to the brightest star in the nighttime sky for any season. Just around sunset, if you see the bright star Sirius low in the west, you know it's springtime. You hear that? That's not crickets. It's a tiny little frog called the spring peeper. When Sirius is low in the west around sunset, listen for the peepers during this time of the year. If you're outside on a clear night, it's fun to try and find the constellations on your own or with your family. The first thing you want to do is get your bearings. What does that mean? Well, it means you need to figure out the compass directions, also known as cardinal points. You can either use a handheld compass, like this one, to find north, or use a compass app on your phone so that you can figure out where the compass directions are compared to where you are standing. 
Once your compass hand points and shows you where north is, you know opposite of that is south. Now, face south and try to find the stars that make up the constellation known as Leo the Lion. Leo the Lion dominates the southern sky in the spring. He looks like a crooked coat hanger, and his head looks like a backward question mark. Our ancient ancestors imagined a mighty lion in this part of the sky. And because of the rotation of Earth, he appears to move across the sky all night long. High over our heads and just above Leo the Lion, you'll find the famous grouping of stars known as the Big Dipper. But the Big Dipper is not a constellation. It's an asterism. An asterism is a grouping of stars that are a part of a constellation. In this case, the Big Dipper is a part of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Ursa Major and Leo travel together through the spring night. A fun project to do is to make stick figure drawings of the constellations. Here's one of Leo the Lion. You can even write in the names of some of the stars. Then, not only do we learn the constellations, but we can also start to learn the names of the stars. Do this enough and you might learn all the constellations in the sky. Well, that is the end of today's program. If you're interested in learning more or using that program called Stellarium, you can go to the website that we'll leave in the link in our description or the one that's below. And you can simply download that at Stellarium.org, load it to your desk or laptop, and you too can begin using it as your own personal home planetarium device. And this way you can plan observing sessions and sort of fast forward through locations on Earth and time. And it's a wonderful tool that you can use in order to get engaged with learning more about the subject of astronomy and observing the stars. We hope you enjoy. Have a nice day and we'll see you all again next time on the Virtual Outreach Program series.